So, you the rookie that's gonna shock the world, huh? Sure as heck gonna try. Good. I'm glad you are here. Just remember, it's all out there for you. Work hard, listen, watch how we do. And you got a chance to do something special. Now, let's see what you got. Thanks. I'm happy to be here, man. I'm pumped. Let's do it. Steve, a big moment here. We get a glimpse coming off the bench of the first official NBA appearance from Dub. So here is Easley Jackets making his NBA debut. His palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. But not when it comes to shooting that mid-range J, baby. My first points in the NBA right there. In a moment to celebrate here, those are his first official points as an NBA player. Yes, sir. We're already on the board. Then down here at the defensive end, they got me matched up against the Frenchman, Boris Diaw. And uh, he comes and gets the ball at the top of the key. I think that he's going to shoot the three, so I jump, try to go for the steal, and he takes a dribble, knocks down the mid-range shot. Damn, couldn't let him hit that, right? So we come down on the next possession, and this time Boris Diaz guarding me. But he's a little too slow for that. So I beat him off the dribble, take the fadeaway jumper in his eyes. There we go, baby. Four points on the board. Then I'm trying to even out my stats before halftime. I grab a rebound. I'm pushing the floor. I hit my boy Gerald Henderson as he goes to the hoop. And instead of trying to finish through the contact, he tries to do some Allen Iverson type stuff. Can't convert the layup at the end, so I miss out on that assist. But we go in tied at halftime with the best team in the NBA, so that's something um, to be positive about. Now, when I come out in the second half, they got me matched up against Tim Duncan, also known as the greatest power forward in the league right now. So I try to take Tim Duncan off the dribble, and that didn't work out. And then on the other end, you know, he's teaching me a lesson down low. How are you going to leave a 10-day undrafted rookie alone in the paint with Tim Duncan? Does that make any sense? But it's all good. The Spurs end up getting the win. I wasn't really planning to win this game anyway. I mean, it's the Spurs. It's my first game. We didn't play too well. But hopefully, you know, we can bounce back in the next game. Consider I'm only on a 10-day contract. I got two more games to prove myself right now. That's it. Two games. bad news is you played like a 50 year old record lead bomb and we lost the game you're supposed to ask what the good news is what's the good news the good news is i don't think it's possible for you to play any worse is this supposed to be making me feel better nah man it's supposed to make you understand this is ain't just you we all got a lot of work to do and we're going to do something special this year so put this one behind you, learn from it, and move on, all right? Well, maybe if I got the ball in my spots where I could do something with it, we would have won the game and we wouldn't be having this conversation. In this league, never get too high or too low, and you might survive. Turn on your teammates. Man, you will be gone before you know it. So the next game in my 10-day contract is in Denver, the Mile High City, facing off against the Nuggets, Ty Lawson, Kenneth Reed, and them. So as soon as I check in, I'm getting a spark on the defensive end with the block from behind right there, sending the follow stuff out of bounds. Then Mozgov tries to pass the ball. I deflect it. By the time a follow gets it, he gets an over and back call. And then lastly right here, I get the rebound and I'm pushing the floor right before the end of the quarter. I hit my boy Gerald Henderson and he gets the and one. So I realized that, you know, although I'm sparking us on defense, I got to start getting, you know, some stats, some points on the board. Um, so, you know, I can I can look better at least on paper. So I take JaVale McGee, hit him with the left to right crossover and draw the foul. As you can see, the closer look, see that contact right there. Um, you know, you can't expect a seven footer to guard, you know, a small forward like me too athletic too fast But you know, this is actually a big deal right here because I'm competing with Kid Gilkers for the small forward spot So I got to be able to make free throws, you know I'm only on a 10-day contract if they see that I can knock down free throws, you know I'm more likely to you know get the ball um, as you can see here take the ball straight to the rack off the handoff from Gary Neal Let's get one more angle on it Yup, get that. I'm going right to the rack. As you can see right here, Ty Lawson, just he's too little. Too little. Can't handle this. Um, that's why, you know, I'm a 6'8", 235-pound man. 
And then I, I take it to the rack like a man too. So the good news, we're going at halftime. And I already have pretty much the same stats I had all of last game against the Spurs. So the coach subs me in here. And I'm going to get a starter offensively. They try to double team my boy Roberts. And they leave me open at the top of the key. And I connect from long range. And as I come out, the coach appreciates it. Which I can appreciate. And um, coming down a little bit later towards the end of the game. I pick off the pass from Gary Neal. And I take it coast to coast for the jam. That is what I'm talking about, baby. My first dunk in the NBA right there. We are hyped right now. Let's get an instant replay. As Biamo hits me with a full court outlet pass. And there's nobody in sight but me in the rim. And I throw it down for my first dunk. That was a hype play. But... We end up getting the win on the road, so it's nice to bounce back after losing to the San Antonio Spurs. I got one game left on my 10-day contract, so let's see if I got what it takes to secure my spot on this Charlotte Hornets roster. That's the end of this episode, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe. This is your boy, Easley Jackets, and I'm signing out.